She was one of the original founders of the LPGA Tour, but her influence reached far beyond the fairways. She was a mentor and friend to generations of young athletes, a kind and genuine role model. Patty Berg started playing the game as a 13-year-old in Minneapolis, Minnesota. By age 16, she was the city champion, and by 17, she was a bona fide star. She won 29 tournaments as an amateur and made her living giving clinics for Wilson Sporting Goods before volunteering for the Marines in 1942. Four years later, she returned to civilian life, winning the inaugural U.S. Women's Open. And by 1950, Berg, along with 12 other pros, formed the Ladies Professional Golf Association. She was its first president. Patty Berg won 60 tournaments on the LPGA Tour, 15 of those major titles. But it was her enthusiasm and devotion to the game she loved that will forever live in our hearts. To say a few words in tribute to this great lady, let me introduce a 26-time LPGA Tour uh, winner and uh, of the and winner of the Patty Berg. I'm sorry, Patty Berg Award, Miss Judy Rankin. Judy. Well, good evening. I, um, I'm very honored to be able to uh, speak a few words about Patty Berg to tell you <clears throat> a little bit about my experiences with Patty Berg. Um, but I think a good place to start is when she was 15 years old. At 15, Patty had been introduced to golf and uh, she was quite the competitor. She was a good athlete as a child, could uh, do a lot of things well. So she entered the Minneapolis City Championship. She qualified with a score of 122. That was for 18 holes. And she later said she really got lucky. It could have been 140. She lost the next day in the last flight. And because she had been such a good athlete and able to do everything, uh, it, it set her back a bit. And she wasn't sure about golf. But she went to her parents and she said, I am going to spend the next 365 days working on golf and trying to improve and see if I can get where I like this game. She won the Minneapolis City Championship the following year, and the direction of her life uh, began to unfold. At five foot two, and I would say barely five foot two, um, I am going to refer to her tonight as the freckled persuader. Uh, she could always win people over and sell women's golf. Whether it was in her storied amateur career and then her professional career, uh, women's golf and Patty were synonymous, and she could talk anybody into anything. Or she could just talk a little louder, which she was pretty good at doing that too, and uh, get their attention. But her skill and uh, great record really was overshadowed by everything else that she did so well. Uh, you just heard from Marilyn um, and, and Patty's involvement at being at the very heart of starting women's professional golf and eventually the LPGA. She meant so much to women everywhere. I think, and I really think in Patty's case it wasn't just to women, but it was, it was to golfers and it was to people. Um, she, she loved the game and she encouraged people everywhere she went, um, starting as a very young girl and all the way to the end of her life. Um, in her lifetime, with the Wilson Sporting Goods Company, which I believe started in 1940, um, she mentored many, many young players. Two of the greats who are in this hall learned much from Patty Berg. That's Kathy Whitworth and Carol Mann. Kathy says that everything she learned about professionalism came from Patty Berg. And Carol says behind her parents, Patty Berg had more impact on her life and her golf life than anyone. They stayed very dear to her until the end of her life. The most memorable thing for me about Patty Berg was her work with clinics and exhibitions. She was the greatest show person I have ever seen with a golf club in her hand. She was the most entertaining. Um, she was informative. She was more than funny. She had the gift of timing and uh, physical comedy. She could uh, uh, 
just sling the golf club around and uh, uh, turn her clothes every which way and ev everything she did came off and it came off well. Uh, there is a very long list of recreational golfers and professional players um, who saw Patty in those clinics and were impacted by seeing her. I am one. I saw her in a clinic at a little course in St. Louis called AAA when I was seven years old. Another thing that Patty had was a, an unbelievable memory. Uh, when I was seven years old, my mother was very ill. She was terminally ill, and I didn't see Patty again until I was 14. And amazing that she would remember my name at all, but the very first thing Patty Berg asked me was, how was my mother? And she was like that with so many people. Patty was responsible for, I think, the greatest PR thing the LPGA ever did, called the LPGA Swing Parade. And we would go to tournaments. I came on just a little bit later, but um, this was in the 60s. And almost every tournament we went to, would um, put on, we would put on this LPGA Swing Parade. And uh, Patty was the, uh, the MC and the host. Now and then, when she wasn't there, Marilyn Smith, that you just saw, took her place. But uh, as young players, we would go in the locker room that day, not knowing who she was going to call on to be part of the clinic. And eventually, there would be about 15 people lined up. So there would be a list in the, in the wall in the locker room. And if, if your name was there, there would be a club alongside of it, like Judy Rankin, Judy Torlumke then, forward. Now, it really didn't matter um, if you had a date with your great-grandmother or with a movie star. You called and canceled and you showed up at Patty's clinic. It was that important. Uh, these clinics went on with the LPGA for, for nearly two decades and I, I, don't, I can't think of anything the LPGA ever did better and that was mostly due, totally due, to Patty Berg. Um, we would go sit at these clinics and we would have heard, we heard these stories before because it's, it's, we heard it last week. But uh, the fact was, the delivery was so perfect that you could not help but laugh every time. It was a great experience. Uh, she would, uh, I remember very distinctly, she would uh, she'd turn her visor to the left and she would look at people and she'd say, if you want to hit a hook, you have to think hook. Now, it didn't make so much sense to me at the time. I thought it was pretty funny. It makes a lot more sense to me now because I now realize if you can't think hook, you can't see hook, and if you can't think it and you can't see it, you can't do it. So uh, uh, it was a very, um, it, it was great lessons in many, many things. If you didn't get what she was saying, and also I would tell you she just said it a little bit louder. The LPGA honors her with the Patty Berg Award. It uh, exemplifies diplomacy, sportsmanship, goodwill, and contributions to the game. It is a treasured award and has been awarded uh, well over 20 times. I think if Patty were here tonight, she would say to uh, Marilyn, she would say, kid, we've come a long way. And I think she would say to Larry Nelson and to Vijay Singh, you know, you are wonderful players. I have watched your career all the way through, and now just because you're in this Hall of Fame, don't think you're finished. You've got to keep playing, and you have to keep making people love this game. That's your job now, and what great careers you've had, and congratulations, and God bless, she would say. <clears throat> Patty had an unwavering faith. She loved her family, her friends, and people everywhere. She loved the USA. She'd been known to say on more than uh, one million occasions, God bless the USA. And oh, did she promote golf. In clinics, she had a memorable line with her visor twisted and with a golf club banging on the ground and with the crowd already warmed up and laughing, she would announce, I'm not overweight, I'm just too short. And I think we all know now, she wasn't too short. She was a giant person. She was a giant voice for this game we love. And we are very fortunate to have been in her company. Thank you.